the seasonal outlook for the 2019 dry season. Mr. Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Big. My presentation is entitled Towards More Informed Preparation. So, the outlook was not a simple or easy one to make because the following are key climate influences when we look at long range seasonal predictions for Trinidad and Tobago. We considered all of these because all are important. They bring different nuances to our weather systems. But for brevity, I will briefly speak about the two that we will consider as being most influential for the 2019 dry season. That, well, those two are the El Nino Southern Oscillation Phenomena and the sea surface temperatures around Trinidad and Tobago. As indicated in the video earlier, El Nino has far-reaching global and regional consequences or effects when it is present. So, ladies and gentlemen, at the start of this year, sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific Ocean where, well, which is used to determine when an El Nino is occurring, was cooler than average, indicating La Nina was present, and we actually had an La Nina, indicated here by, blue, by the blue colors. At the same time, if you look where Trinidad and Tobago TNT is located here, sea surface temperatures were warmer than usual. By the start of November, we see that the sea surface temperatures in the area of concern in the Central and Eastern Pacific Ocean warmed significantly and today are currently in at El Nino threshold. But an important factor is that the El Nino has not been declared because those warming temperatures has, have not fully transferred into the atmosphere, meaning that the atmosphere has not responded in kind, fully. So what we have is an El Nino knocking on the door. The ocean is saying yes, but the atmosphere is not fully there as yet, but it's quickly catching up. At some time in the future, perhaps next month or this month, we believe strongly at the Met Office that an El Nino will be present and declared. At the same time, the temperature around Trinidad and Tobago remained warmer than usual, and these are forecast to remain warmer than usual going into the 2019 dry season. So, our El Nino watch product that we issue and place on our app and website that is available to all of you remain in El Nino watch mode at this time. And once there's a change, we will update it to let you know what is happening. And this takes us into our third dry season hazardous seas outlook. For us in Trinidad and Tobago, the dry seasons tend to bring rougher seas, and this is related to the climate. And given that there is currently an 80 to 83 percent chance for El Nino to develop by year end, we have examined the historical weather behavior of weather systems during El Nino dry seasons here in Trinidad and Tobago. And this seems to produce rougher seas when you have, oops, when you have, well, that white ribbon just over southern US that shows where winter storms tend to be driven during an El Nino year. And based on that, based on our knowledge and our expertise, because those systems are closer to us, they generate a lot of long period swells, not only swells, and because in an El Nino year you tend to have a lot of these winter storms traversing the southern half of the U.S. and making it cooler and wetter, it impacts our rough seas here. Based on that and our knowledge, 
We are saying that our hazardous seas outlook calls for increased frequency of not only long period swell events over the Southern Caribbean. Fisher folks, those living in local coastal areas and those in the marine industry should expect a higher than usual number of rough and hazardous seas during the dry seasons. And we know that this presents a challenge uh, for loss and damage to increase and for activities within the tourism sector. So take note. We now move to the dry season temperature outlook where we see much above temperature, uh, warmer than average temperatures are forecast for the entire dry seasons. Both day and night time temperatures are expected to be warmer than average with the strongest chance for warmer than average temperatures in our cities, in our urban areas and built up areas. There are also enhanced chances for a number of hot spells. Uh, these are periods when we expect consecutive days for the maximum temperature to rise above 34 or rise to and above 34 in Trinidad and rise to and above 32 degrees in Tobago. We also expect to see both an increase in single hot days as well as increase in the duration of the hot spells during late February and all of March. This notwithstanding though, given that we are going to have less rainfall or predicted less rainfall, a few nights during January and February have a very good chance of the temperature cooling all the way down to 20 degrees or thereabout um, when the skies are clear. So let's go to the temperature outlook, the rainfall outlook, sorry. Um, we have headlined the upcoming dry season as one that is likely to be harsh. One when water is likely to be as scarce as gold and one when every drop conks. So we hope that the media get that song bite. And that is because we are predicting suppressed rainfall that will lead to near normal to below normal rainfall for the overall dry season January to May. It was really a difficult call to make uh, in terms of keeping some of these areas as near normal because as the season progresses, we expect to see some very long dry spells as I indicated over most areas but we believe that this will be softened overall by some rainfall in January and some rainfall in May that could nullify to some degree the drying. But even though we say near normal, it will not be evenly distributed. Some months are going to be hotter, wetter. Some are going to be hotter, drier. We move now to the sub-seasonal um, scale where we looked at the three, the three first months, January to March, and this period is ex likely to be extremely dry. Extremely dry with chances very much enhanced for below normal rainfall and a strengthening of the drying, a strengthening of the drying during February and March. Based on this and our forecast for high day, higher daytime temperatures, we believe that Trinidad and Tobago is likely to experience prolonged dry spells with potential to de develop short-term drought-like or drought conditions. And I'm happy to see WRA is here and WASA. And this speaks volume for the ministry in order of its planning. During the second sorry, during the second half of the season, and we have overlapped March, so we go from March to May, the rainfall is likely to be similar in, for the overall dry season, because we believe, as we said, May is likely to influence uh, the rainfall. But an important point to make here is that perhaps all is not so lost, WRA, because when we have an El Nino, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times the onset to the wet season is earlier in May but, and it's more aggressive. If you go back to 2010, we had some mountable rainfall in May, early and aggressive, and we had the highway going to south collapsing. So that's food for thought. To provide more information with respect to contingency planning, we looked at the chance of getting the average 
the national average. The national average total rainfall for the dry season is 434 millimeters. So we looked at what is the chance of any area in Trinidad and Tobago getting that amount, and we see that the chance for this amount is greatest in the northeastern area where there is a 45 to 65% chance. Elsewhere, the chance for getting that amount is less than 50%. And it is down to about 20% in the northwestern half uh, of Trinidad in areas such as Paramin, Diego Martin, Maraval, Chaguanas, and Port of Spain. And this has implications for the farmers in Paramin. So Dano, I'm seeing you here. So I hope that you will take that message to the farmers. We went further to assist water resource managers to look at what is the possibility of extreme dryness or drought for the season by looking at the possibility that the dry season will be in the lowest 10 percent of all dry seasons we found that the chance for this to occur was low to moderate but there is still a chance for it to occur should it occur then it has impacts far telling impacts for all sectors We now present our bushfire um, outlook. It was a difficult one to make as well, but typically because of how wet the ground is now, but typically bushfires dangers in Trinidad and Tobago are significantly higher during an El Nino dry season. And that is because the much drier conditions and the high temperatures can lead to depletion in moisture in the vegetation and in the soil and make it worse for um, fire potential. So the risk for bushfires and landfill fires, thank, I'm happy to see solid waste is here as well. Um, you need to prepare adequately for the beetum and the kind of fires that could happen there and the, the, the quality of the air. We advise as well that slash and burn methods of land clearing has a higher chance of triggering bush and forest fires during the 2019 dry season. Um, if one recall 2010 and 2016 dry seasons, we had a record number of bush fires and a record number of acreage burnt, and we are asking for advocacy so that this could be reduced because when that happens, the following wet seasons, uh, we don't want to experience the runoff from the hills. So. We continue to provide a climate-based dengue incident risk for the St. Andrews in David County as an outlook. This outlook shows that the area has as its most likely chance lower than average number of dengue cases for the period January to May. The chance of this occurring is 46%, but there is still a good chance, 38%, of above average number of cases and a much smaller 16% chance for near normal number of cases. The forecast says that the most likely number of cases are closer to 122 cases, with the worst case scenario being 236 cases, and a paltry six cases being the best case. So you have a wide range there, Sangri Gandhi, um, Nurse Bartholomew. Yes, so take note of this and use it in your contingency planning. So. We have a number of headline statements that we want to take back. And here, with less rain, we expect that the dry season is likely to produce dry spells and even drought or drought-like conditions. And this will lead to or has knock-on effects such as reduced water availability and increased water stress that will put pressure on farmers, water managers, and other water intensive sectors. We are advocating as well that warmer days and nights will lead to daily temperature extremes or heat being more common. So too will multi-day hot spells and we know that hot days can increase the risk of dehydration and other health or heat-related stresses, particularly for those who are socially isolated, the elderly, long, young children, and young livestock. And 
high bushfire potential is likely, as I indicated earlier, and this means increased risk for poor air quality that will put pressure on persons suffering from respiratory ailments and increase the pressure on the public health system. So that's my presentation. Thank you.